Hi, Yogi Scholars. This is Kristen again from Yoga Day for day two of our yoga session. So yesterday was a um, class just basically on the basics of yoga and what yoga is and how it can help us and how important our breath is. And so today's focus is going to be on balance. So we're going to do a lot of balancing postures, um, but we're also going to talk about um, in yoga, a lot of times the things that we do physically have a mental component as well. So although physically we're going to be working on balancing postures, there's also the idea of balancing your life, right? And so you can think of it, and here's a vocabulary word for you, equanimity. Equanimity is another word for being balanced, not too much on one side, not too much on the other. And that ideally is where we would like to try to be emotionally and mentally most of the time as well, right? The more, the more balance we have in our life, the, usually the better that we feel. This is a book about yoga. It's called The Light on Yoga. And so he says in here, yoga is not for that person who gorges too much. That means he that eats a lot of food, right? Nor for that person who starves themselves. It is not for him or her who sleeps too much, nor for the person who stays awake. By moderation in resting and eating, by regulation in working and sleeping and waking, one becomes a yogi. So yoga really is about not just being able to physically balance in these postures, which is a great thing to do, but also to kind of being mentally and emotionally balanced in our lives. So in our last class, we talked about how our mind can take us outside of our bodies and think about other things all the time. And yoga is the idea of harnessing our yoking our mind to our body. And that very much um, corresponds with the idea of balance in our life as well. So you have to be mentally present in order to balance on one leg and do some of these postures, but also too, in order to be mentally um, healthy, right? We have to have our mind focused here where we are. We're not worrying about something that happened before. We're not worrying about something that may or may not happen. We're here mentally, physically, with our, in our physical bodies here in the present and now. It's the only real place to be. And yoga helps us cultivate that skill because it really is a skill. That's the theme today, equanimity, balance, right? We're going to keep that in mind with all of the stuff that we're going to do today. But we're going to start just like we did yesterday. So sit in a comfortable position. It's always a nice way to start. Chances are you, know, what, you did something, you know, it was the middle of the day probably, um, and so you've already had a full day things going. And so when you get here in front of your computer or your phone or however you're tuning into this YouTube channel, just take a few seconds to ground yourself. Feel your hips sink into the floor, feel your knees kind of open up. Pay attention to how your body feels. Close your eyes and then just do a little stance. Am I holding tension anywhere? Am I clenching my jaw? And if the answer is yes, just go ahead and let it relax. And then interlace your fingers behind your head and gently pull your chin into your chest, keeping your spine nice and straight. Hand over, stretch your neck. And then switch sides. Sitting up nice and tall, we'll just do a couple of head rolls. So tuck your chin into your chest and roll. It is inevitable whenever I start doing these, I'm like, oh my gosh, my neck is tight. but hopefully after these next 45 minutes, you'll feel a lot better. All right, now take your hands out, point your thumbs to the ground, reach back behind you and pull your arms away, open your chest, and then slowly look over your left shoulder, pull your arms over to the right. Again, you can use a towel if you need to. And then come back to the center and look over your right shoulder. And come back to the center. And inhale, stretch your arms up over your head, reach up. And exhale, arms down. Inhale, stretch up. And exhale, push down. One more. Inhale, stretch up. And exhale, come down. All right. Yesterday, we learned the sun salutation A. Today, we're going to learn sun salutation B. So, coming to the top of your mat. Or, if you don't have a mat, just come to the floor. Stand up. Your feet can be about hip-width distance apart, or you can have your toes together and have the jab between your heels. 
You're gonna inhale, stretch your arms up over your head, look up, and then exhale, sit down into the chair. So this is called Utkatasana. All the postures that we do end in the word asana, that's for posture. You can sit down low, it's a chair. You look like a chair, right? Sitting down, the chair that isn't there, right? Sit down low. And exhale, come forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit down. Big breath in. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the floor. Step back, plank pose. Remember, you can always go down to your knees. Lower down, low plank. Breathe into upward facing dog. And breathe out to downward facing dog. Feel free, guys, to bend your knees as much as you need to to lift your hips up high. Take a big breath in. Exhale the ear out. For this first one, let's just walk our feet to our hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, reach up, another Utkatasana. And exhale, release, arms down. So I fudged it. At the beginning, we did two Utkatasanas. We only need to do one. So let's try that one more time. We're going to do one. Inhale, sit down. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back, high plank. Lower down, low plank. Breathe in, up dog. Breathe out, down dog. Big breath in. Now, if you want to try to jump your feet to your hands, remember, you're going to do it on your exhalation. Draw your belly in. Empty all the air out. Jump as quietly as you can. Your feet to your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, remember, it's a tassel. And exhale, release. All right, one more time. Inhale, sit down. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step back. Keep your elbows in close. Lower down. Breathe in, up dog. Breathe out, down dog. Big breath in. Let it out. Inhale. Exhale, look between your two hands and step or hop fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up, arms up over your head. And exhale, arms down by your side. Okay, so yesterday we got into our warrior postures by simply stepping back. You can do that today, or we're gonna, um, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way to get into it. You can try it out. If you don't like it, then you just start from a standing position. However, for this one, I'll show you, we're going to do it from downward facing dog. So you're going to put your hands on the ground, step back to down dog. We're going to start with our right leg this time. So you're going to lift your right leg up. And then, as slowly and mindfully as possible, bring your foot forward. Try to step it between your two hands. Now, the first time I ever did this, I could not get my feet, my foot between my two hands. That is totally fine. You can go halfway and then go a little further. The more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. We're not going into warrior this time because our theme is balance, right? So we're going to do a little bit of a different one. This one's called crescent lunge. You're going to come up, but this time, instead of your foot being on the floor, you're balancing on your toes, right? So it makes it a little bit harder than that warrior, bringing that element of balance in. Remember, the rules still apply. To balance, you focus one spot with your eyes, keep your mouth closed, and breathe in and out through your nose. Take a big breath in. Exhale so you can lunge down. Inhale, push up. Make sure you can see your toes in front of your knee. Exhale, lunge down. Inhale, push up. Exhale, lunge down. Inhale, push up. Now we're going to work into a twist. So my right leg is forward. I'm going to bring my left arm forward and my right arm back this way. Inhale, come up. Exhale, put your hands on the ground and see if you can step back. Downward facing dog. So we're going to do that same thing on the other side. So left leg lifts up as mindfully as possible. Step it through. Remember, doesn't matter what it looks like as long as you're focusing on what you're doing. Inhale, rise up that balancing crescent lunge. Big breath in. Exhale, lunge down. Inhale, push up. Exhale, lunge down. Inhale, push up. Exhale, lunge down. Inhale, push up. Breath in. Breath out, twist, right arm forward, left arm back. And you'll find that you might wobble and shake here, that's okay. Breathe in, breathe out, hands down, 
step that downward facing dog. Pedal your legs right and left and right and left. Take a big breath in. Exhale your out. Look between your two hands and step or hop forward. And let's roll up slowly for five, four, three, two, and one. Roll your shoulders down and back. Okay. We're going to do some postures balancing on one leg. There are a couple of tricks I told you yesterday. First, the eyes and the breathing, those are really important. But also, core strength is really important to balance as well. So when you're in these balancing postures, it's important not to let your belly hang. You want to pull the belly in. You want to squeeze your glutes slightly and stretch up as tall as you can out of your waist. The more you're engaged through here and solid and strong, the better your balance is going to be when we're trying to balance on one leg. Also, another trick is I've noticed most people, when they fall, all the weight goes to the outside of their foot. If you look down at your foot and really push your big toe down, you have a slight bend in your knee, but you can track the thigh as tight as you can and then lift up. That's a strong, sturdy base. And pushing that big toe down helps to not let you fall off to the side. However, if you do fall off to the side, know that it is absolutely okay. There's no harm in that at all. We're going to do the one that we did yesterday, extended leg raise pose. You're going to shift your weight to your left leg, push your left big toe down and contract your thigh, and then lift your right knee up and hold your knee. Here again, you can hold your knee or you can reach down inside and grab your foot and extend. I'm going to stay here today. I held my knee yesterday. I'm going to stay with my foot extended. Take a big breath in. Exhale, open your leg out to the side. Remember of that belly. Remember to lift up out of your waist and stretch your left arm to the left. And then very slowly wiggle your fingers. Now, if you were holding your knee, it's going to look like this. And then bring it back to the center. Now, we're not going to kick it forward. We're going to try not to let that leg drop. Stretch your arms up over your head. And then exhale, kick it back down. See if those toes can point directly down toward the ground. Find one spot to focus on. Breathe in. Breathe out. And come back up. Shake your legs out. Now remember, don't get upset if you fell or if you wobbled. It's completely normal, especially if you're first starting yoga. If you want to get better at playing basketball, you practice. If you want to get better at balancing on one leg, you practice, right? I've been doing this a really long time. You're going to push your right big toe down, contract the thigh, squeeze the glute, stretch it out of the waist, and reach down and grab your left knee. Stay here or outside of the foot and extend. Take a big breath in. Exhale, open out to the side. Stretch your arm out to the right. And then look over your fingers. Bring it back to the center. And now see, kick it back up. Push the right big toe down, point these toes down toward the ground, and slowly come up. All right, the next one we're going to do, um, I call it, I, it's a little um, sequence that I put together, and I call it TikTok. <laughs> I did that before I knew that TikTok was a thing. <laughs> but it, so this isn't like TikTok the video thing, this is TikTok like a clock. All right, so you're going to come and sit and stand with your toes together, half inch gap between your heels. You're going to lift your right leg up, hold your knee. Now stretch your arms up over your head. Try not to let that foot touch the ground. Take a big breath in. Exhale, fold forward, hands on the floor, kick that leg up. Tick. And tuck. Let's try to do that three times. Ready? Tick. And tuck. One more tick. And tuck. And drop it down. Other side. So, Right leg down, left leg up, hold your knee. Get your balance, find your stability, find your spot to focus on. Stretch your arms up, tick. Hands to the floor, lift the leg up, tuck. Tick. And tuck. One more tick. And tuck. And release. Slowly come up. All right. Another balancing pose is eagle pose. So eagle pose is a great one because you're balancing on one leg. You're also twisting and opening up all your joints and it calls for a lot of core work as well. So the way that you're going to do it is bring your arms out like cactus arms and you're gonna bring your right arm under your left arm. You're gonna cross the elbows first. That's the most important thing. If your hands can't touch, totally okay. There's several ways that you can make your eagle be. 
first you can make your eagle be like, like this. Now, my hands barely touch, right? This is still the beak of my eagle. If this doesn't work, then you can make your beak of the eagle this way. That's a fine beak too. Either way you do it, you choose. Now, if your hands are like this, you can experiment with it. If you pull your elbows down, you'll feel a stretch here through these muscles, right? If you lift your elbows up and press your forearms in, then at least for me, I feel a stretch in my rhomboids right between my shoulder blades. So try it. If you're making a beak like this, walk your hands up as much as you can and see if you can kind of pull your shoulder blades apart so you can feel that stretch. However you do it, as long as you're focusing on your body and it doesn't hurt, you're doing it fine. All right, now we're gonna work into the legs. Bend the knees and then take your right leg and bring it high over your left leg. Now, you're trying to hook your foot underneath your calf muscle. My foot won't hook anymore. So you just squeeze your legs together. Sit down low like that chair pose. Squeeze your legs and your arms in toward one another. Lift your chest, take a big breath in. Exhale, flap your wings. Now we have to do the other side. Cactus your arms, left arm under. Remember, make your beak this way or this way. Focus though on feeling a stretch through some part of your shoulders, either up or down. My shoulders are really tight, so I feel it no matter where I have my hands. And then bend your knees and bring your left leg over your right. If you can hook your foot underneath your calf muscle, that's awesome. That means you're super flexible. If you're like me and you can't, you just squeeze your legs together as tight as you can. Balance and breathe. Lift your chest up. Find one spot to focus on. Take a big breath in. And exhale, flap your wings. And arms down. All right, we'll finish it off with tree pose, just like we did yesterday. So shift your weight to your left leg. This time, we're gonna do tree pose this way, okay? So yes, the, the last class, you had the option, the three options. Here, we're gonna do it on the easy setting. This is called the kickstand. So your heel is gonna be propped up against your ankle and your toes are resting on the ground. And then you bring your hands together in the center of your chest. Now, if you're looking at me on the video or if someone was looking at you, watching you right now doing your yoga, they would say, wow, that person's completely still. I look very, very still. But we're gonna do a little experiment. While we're standing like this in a relatively easy posture, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to feel how your body is moving. So from the outside looking in, someone would think I was completely still. But when I close my eyes and feel a little bit deeper into my body, Hopefully you feel all of those little micro movements that are happening in order to keep yourself balanced. I feel my weight going into my toes and then back into my heel. I feel it kind of going to one foot and then the other. I feel all these little muscles, these micro muscles in my ankles working all together to keep me balanced on one leg. So on one, in, in, in one point of view, I'm completely still. In another point of view, I'm in constant motion moving to stay balanced. Kind of cool. Let's do the other side. Shift your weight to your right leg, left leg up. So what we did there, and what we're getting ready to do right now, close your eyes, tune in. It's not just an exercise in balance, it's also an exercise in mindfulness. Feel your body. This side for me feels a little bit less stable than the other one. Feel the muscles in your ankle and your toes. Feel how the weight is moving back and forth and maybe even side to side. And release. Legs down. So it's an exercise in mindfulness, meaning that hopefully when you were doing that posture with me with your eyes closed, focusing on your own body, there was no room at all for anything else in your mind except for what you were doing. And if that is the case, then good for you. In this day and age, we all um, trick ourselves into thinking that we can multitask, that we can do many, many things at once. When in fact, neuroscientists who are scientists that study the brain say that actually makes us less efficient. So when we're working on one single thing at a time, that's when our brains work most efficiently. And so when we can train ourselves to keep that concentration, to keep that focus on our bodies while we're balancing, it's a skill that then we can take to other things, to our studies, to whatever activities we want to get better at, right? To our just our daily life, being more aware that your mind is wandering, and then being able to bring it back and be in the present moment, which went, which really truly is where we're the most balanced. All right, so good work balancing. Um, we're gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some homework at the end of this class.
class for a little bit more balance. But the neck, not the, the rest of the stuff is going to be on the ground. So slowly step all the way back. And this time we're going to do a one-legged bow pose. One-legged bow poses are really nice. So you're going to prop yourself up on your elbows. You're going to bend your left leg, reach back, and grab your foot. Now there are two ways to grab your foot. The first way is from the outside, like you see me doing right now. If you're pretty flexible and you want a little bit more of a shoulder open, you can walk your hands around and grab from the inside. That's fine to do as well. I'm going to stay from the outside. Bring your legs as close together as you can, and now stretch your right arm out in front of you. First, you're just going to kick back. Once you kick, try to get that thigh up off the ground. Then stretch your right arm and your right leg. So one side of your body is doing one thing. The other side of your body is doing another thing. Stretch and kick. Kick and stretch. And slowly lower down. All right, we're going to switch sides. So drop that leg down. Wrap yourself up on your elbows. Reach back. Grab your right foot. Now come on down. Stretch your left arm out in front of you. Kick your leg. Get that thigh up off the ground. And then when you're ready, stretch your left arm and your left leg. Kick and stretch. Here again, the right side of your body is doing one thing. The left hand side of your body is doing another thing. Find your balance right there in between those two strange things. And slowly lower down. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is called locust pose. We're going to make the wings of a locust. So the first way we're going to do it two times. First way we're going to do it is arms out with our palms facing down. Take a big breath and lift everything up off the mat. Stretch your arms. You can look up to stretch your throat, or you can be like me and keep your head neutral. Kick up, stretch back, and lower down. Take a breath here. Now, if it feels good and you can reach back and make a fist behind your back, go ahead and do that. Stretch your arms. This is the wings of your locust. And stretch and kick. Lift the legs up. Lift the arms up. Come up and go up, and slowly lower down. Press yourself up. We're going to do a few bridge poses again. This time to get into bridge, we're going to use a little bit of core work. So draw your belly in, stretch your arms forward, and we're going to try to slowly lower all the way down without flopping. Walk your feet in close to your body. Arms down by the side, palms facing down. Take a big breath in and lift the hips up, bridge pose. From here, if you want to make it a little bit harder, you can take your hands, make a fist underneath you, and lift up a little bit higher. This works into your chest and your shoulders. Also, too, you can come up on your toes and see if you can hold it there. And hold this, we're going to hold this for three breaths. So take it slowly, breathe in and out. Big breath in and out. One more breath in and out. Slowly lower down. Bring your knees into your chest. Rock gently side to side. All right, this time we're going to do a one legged bridge. So for one legged bridges, you're going to keep your right heel on the ground and bring your left heel on, or your right foot on the ground, bring your left heel on top of your right heel. Arms down by your side with your palms facing down. Flex the foot. Now, if you feel this in your knee at all, you back off or do the two-legged bridge. Arms down by your side. Take a big breath and lift up. And then see if you lift up a little bit higher. And hold. And lower down. And now we'll go into that figure four stretch. So bring the knee up. Reach around, grab behind the leg, and rock gently side to side. Remember your options here for figure four stretch. You can use a strap or a dish towel or a wash rag to help you get the grip. You can straighten the leg for a hamstring stretch, or you can hold over the knee and intensify it. You'll feel it in the outer hip. It's also really good for your lower back. All right, let's do the other side. Left foot on the ground, right heel on top of the left foot, flex the foot, arms down by your side, draw the belly in, squeeze the glutes, lift the hips up. And slowly lower down. And now figure four stretch, bend the knee, reach around, grab behind the leg, pull it in. 
Notice while you're doing this, does your jaw or your shoulders, are you holding tension there? Just relax them. And release. That feels really good. All right. Well, while we're lying here on the ground, we're going to do some more core work. The last class we did dead bug pose. We're still going to do dead, dead, dead bug pose. But now we're going to add to it. Because one of the things that physically helps you balance in yoga is a really strong core. So it's important that we work on it. It's also really important to have a strong core um, for your posture, you know, for your postural alignment, keeping you from rounding. Um, so it's really good. To, and the core actually is all the muscles that hold up your spine. So it's not just your stomach, although that's important. It's also your back, which we did when we were lying down on our, on our stomachs before. So if you remember dead butt pose, we're going to make our way to 90 degree angle. Press the lower back down into the floor as much as you can. The minute you do that, you're going to feel um, your muscles in the, in the belly begin to work. Stretch your arms up. And now, right leg extends, left arm over your ear. And switch. And we'll count down again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, belly in, 5, back down, 4, 3, 2, and one, and relax. Bring the knees down, drop them down to one side, and then to the other side, and come back up. All right, now we're gonna do bicycles, but for these, since it's yoga bicycles, we're gonna go slowly. I bet sometimes in gym you do bicycles going very quickly. These we're gonna do slowly, keeping aware, keep, um, keep really aware of that alignment again. So, stack your knees up just like we did before. Push your back into the ground. Bring your hands back behind your head with your elbows out wide, neck nice and long. And now extend the right leg to the right hand. And switch. And we're going to count down again. 10, 9, and one. And really stretch your arms and your legs apart. It feels really good. Maybe you shake your legs. And then we'll do that rocking and rolling again because it's fun to do. So bring the knees into the chest and rock and roll. Maybe do it three or four times. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, another thing that's really fun to do is trying to rock and roll up to standing. I'll show you what I mean. And you can try it, or if you, don't, if you say that doesn't look like fun at all, then don't do it. But you rock, you gotta get a lot of momentum. Let's see if you can fall all the way up to standing. And then go back down and rock. And then come back up to standing. And then come back down. The first time you do it, sometimes it's hard, and then the more you do it, the easier it gets. And before long, it's not hard at all. So it just takes a little bit of practice. All right, we're gonna finish it off with boat pose. Hands underneath your knees, roll your shoulders back, lift the legs up. Now you can stay here with your hands behind your knees in a supported boat, totally fine. You are also welcome, if it's a little too much to just let your hands go and balance, you can put your hands behind your back, right? Stretch your arms and hold, hold this for five, four, three, two, oh no, your boat is filling with water. You gotta get your, uh, get your bucket and you gotta get the water out. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and that's it. Okay, good job, scholars. We are now going to go into the stretching part, um, which hopefully you're looking forward to. We're going to do the same stretch that we did yesterday because it's one of my favorites, and I think it's one that you should do all every single day if you can. Take your right leg, step it forward. Push your heel forward. Remember, push your hips forward. Remember, you're going to look down. Make sure you can see your toes. That's important. Lift your torso up. Then stretch your left arm up and over. And then hands down to either side of your foot. Flex your foot. Get the hamstring stretched. And 
and switch sides. Right leg back, left leg forward. Hands on your knee, push. Right arm up and over, stretch. Hands on the floor. Send your hips back. All right, moving as gracefully and efficiently and mindfully as possible. You're gonna keep this leg forward and you're gonna slowly come back, sit down and set yourself up for a seated stretch. So now your foot is gonna go inside your thigh. Keep this foot flexed and your leg as straight as possible. First, we're just gonna fold up. First, try to keep your spine nice and long and stretch your hands toward your toes. Now, if you have tight hamstrings, that's totally okay. If you're here, if your hands are here, that's completely okay, but we're gonna move with our breath. So every inhalation, I want you to think about lifting up, you know, lifting your chest, and every exhalation, maybe you fold a little bit forward. So you can use your breath to help you with your flexibility. So inhale to fortify and lift, and then exhale to get a little deeper into the stretch. And then if you'd like, you can let your head relax. And then take your left hand inside, bring your right arm up and over. And come on back up, let's switch legs. Right leg out, left leg in. First, chest fold. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale to fold. Keep your leg as straight as you can without feeling pain. And let your head relax if you can. Take your right hand inside your leg, stretch your left arm up and over, feel the stretch on the side of your torso. And slowly come back up. Great job, guys. All right, lie down on your backs. You're gonna extend the right leg out, interlace the fingers over your left knee, and Pull your knee down close to your shoulder. Keep your shoulders relaxed and just pull with the strength of your arms. Then please take your right hand over your knee, pull your knee over to the right as you gently look over your left shoulder for a seat for a supine twist. And other side. Left leg down, right leg lift up, interlace your fingers over your right knee, pull your right knee down. Take your left hand over your knee, pull your knee across your body over to the left, look over your right shoulder. And now bring both knees into your chest, rock gently side to side. Take a big breath in and exhale, release, legs down and arms up. So for this one, we're going to do a loving kindness meditation. So make yourself comfortable, walk your shoulders down away from your ears, close your eyes. Breath in, let it out. And now in your mind, I want you to picture someone that you love very much. Maybe it's a family member, someone that you know well and that you love a lot. Picture their face in your mind and say to them, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free from pain, may you live in peace. Good 
breath in, let it out. And now in your mind, please picture someone that you know as an acquaintance. Maybe you're not very close with, maybe someone from school or on the bus or that you play sports with. Picture their face in your mind and say to them, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free from pain, may you live in peace. Now in your mind, please picture someone you have issues with. Maybe that you're angry with, or don't want to get along with. Picture their face in your mind. Say to them, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be free from pain, may you live in peace. And now, in your mind, please picture yourself. Say these words to yourself. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be free from pain. May I live And then slowly stretch your arms up over your head like you're waking up. Gently roll to one side. Take a big breath in. Let it out. And then slowly come up to sit. So in conclusion, that's uh, we're going to be a 40 minute class today. That means that you have 20 minutes to do some stuff on your own. Yesterday, your, your assignment was to go and research a little bit about yoga and hopefully you have a list of postures or things that you would like to do as a challenge and to send them to me either with um, our virtual office hours on Zoom this week or by email or you can contact me on Instagram, all of those things. Um, Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N at yogadayus.com my email and then at yoga day us is my instagram or our instagram handle or just wait for it and show me your list when we, when we meet together virtually i'd love to see you guys this week your homework is a couple of different things one i would like you to look up the word equanimity and write down or just read it and see exactly what it means and then think about in your life areas in your life where it would you would benefit from being a little bit more balanced that's the mental side of it, right? The physical side of it is now to work on postures with your balance. And that is either to work on the balancing postures that we did today, or even an even more simple way is today, when you are in the kitchen, hopefully washing the dishes after your meal, or drying the dishes, or doing something in the kitchen, you lift up one leg. And then you switch and you lift up another. And then when you go to bed at night and you're getting, or when you're getting ready to go to bed at night and you're brushing your teeth, when you brush your top teeth, lift up one leg. When you brush your bottom teeth, you lift up the other leg. And in the morning, when you wake up and you brush your teeth, you do that exact same thing. The idea is, is that little bit by little bit, little minutes through the day, which will add up to about 20 minutes, you think about this idea of balance. And the more we practice it, both in our yoga practice or just in little chores um, throughout our day, the more we'll be aware of it when we really need it. So the more balanced we'll be when we're in situations where we feel a little bit uncomfortable or a little bit nervous or a little bit flustered. And when you feel more balanced and, when, and you're able to keep your equanimity in those situations, usually the better choices you make. 
So it's not only a skill that benefits us in a yoga class, it's a life skill that can benefit us our entire lives and make things better. So that's my assignment for you guys. Come to a seated position. We'll end with one breathing exercise. And if you like this breathing exercise, I encourage you to show it to your family. This is what I call take five breaths. And we do it in our house. I don't know when we were lying down in Shavasana. I don't know if you've heard my kids inside, but they were yelling and screaming about something. I think it's a, probably it was a video game. <laughs> anyway, they say it to me all the time. So if ever you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed or out of control or imbalanced, right? Then the idea is, uh, is to take five. And when you take five, all you do is you breathe in as you count to five on your fingers. And you breathe out as you count to five on your fingers. Breathe in. Breathe out. So maybe it will become a household term like it is in our household. Anytime you feel the need to, I'm going to take five. And anytime someone you see in your family maybe needs it, say, hey, let's take five. Easy, simple. Get the job done usually right away, all right? So hands together in the center of your chest. All that is good within me honors and is grateful for all that is good within you. Together we say, namaste. Thanks for showing up. Don't forget your homework, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.